Welcome back to more Warhammer lore. We've finally made it to Clan Pestilence, one of the four Skaven great clans, whom are feared throughout their domain for their vile diseases and plagues these Skaven have mastered and unleashed upon this world. Probably the most feared out of all the great clans, these Skavens are feared more by their enemies and allies alike, having been the main aggressors and instigators of both of the two great Skaven civil wars that has ravaged much of the Under Empire for about four centuries, and almost overthrowing the Council of Thirteen from their power. We are getting a little ahead of ourselves, however, as unlike the previous clans of Mulder and Scryer, Clan Pestilence actually has a documented origin story. In the Clan Scryer video, we learned about the Great Catastrophe in Skaven Blight, in which, under the Great Council's guidance, a great machine was built to further the plans of the Horned Rat and allow the Skaven to rapidly expand the entire Warhammer world. Now, of course it exploded and killed the vast majority of the Skaven population in Skaven Blight, but it did open up a passage into the Dwarven Underway. Now, this is where Clan Pestilence actually comes into play. See, Clan Pestilence long ago was one of these migrating clans. They probably had another name back then, but none remember it. Their clan moved south into what is now modern Araby and stumbled upon a great tunnel that traveled beneath the great ocean and deep into the jungles of what we now know as Lustria. From below, the clan arose from under a great temple city deep within the central jungles. There, they claimed the city for the glory of the Horned Rat and fought off and killed the Lizardman armies that tried to reclaim it. But it was not these mighty reptilians that proved the downfall of their clan, but one enemy that no sword nor spear could ever destroy. The dire swamps and jungles of Lustria began to take its toll on the verminous horde, as diseases of many kinds began to sicken and kill the clan from the inside. With only a few hundred of their brethren left, the vermin begged their lord and savior, the Horned Rat, to deliver them from this nightmare. With their fur soaked in sweat and blood, with boils all around their bodies, their fevered brains were racked by visions called down upon them. All Skaven at least feigned devotion to the Great Horned One, but the idea that began forming in their decaying brains would spell the future of their clan. Either simply due to the Great Fever, or perhaps the influence of either the Horned Rat, or possibly even another ruinous power, their visions began to solidify. It was then that the Skaven knew what they had to do. If they dedicated themselves to the Horned Rat, they would be spared. If they scored the Lustrian jungles of the south for victims to be sacrificed, the Horned One's hunger would be appeased. If they grew to worship the very diseases that were killing them, they would finally be born anew. And so from the darkest desperation, the diseased Ratmen of Clan Pestilence were born to this world and thus began the rise of Sotek. I will inevitably cover the Prophet of Sotek in more detail in a later video, so I will give you a brief overview of the events as they unfold instead of a more detailed account, which will definitely come in a later video as I just said. Following their rebirth, Clan Pestilence grew strong, plundering the ancient archives of the ruined cities of Lustria of arcane secrets long hidden within sealed vaults. They brought back sacrifice after sacrifice for their vile god, bringing to him the blood and body of their reptilian enemies. The clan looked further and further to dedicate themselves more to the essence of corruption itself, for their devotion to their god was unquestioned. However, with the Skaven threat becoming far too large to simply ignore, the other temple cities were forced to mobilize their forces and end the clan once and for all. The prophet of Sobtek, a mere skink with fiery red coloring, came into being, and with him a slew of skinks with similar markings were spawned that were relatively immune to the majority of clan pestilence's diseases. After a great many battles, the Skaven armies were pushed back all the way to the ruined city of Quetza, where there, they were encircled by the fully fledged armies of all the temple cities, gathered to finally rid the world of the pestilence threat once and for all. Encircled and isolated, the plague lords of Clan Pestilence were forced to flee the continent. The pestilent host spent a decade fighting their way towards the shoreline, and it was from there that they created a fleet of rotting ships to bear them towards the jungles of the Southlands. Back in their former territory, it was here that the clan firmly established itself, first by conquering the many lesser clans that had occupied their new territory, and strongholds were built, fortress layers were raised, and the clan prepared for the confrontation with their brethren in the north that was all but inevitable. When the emissaries of their clans reached the doorsteps of the 
Council of Thirteen's chamber within Skavenblight, they demanded that they reclaim the rightful place within the Under Empire and proclaim Lord Nurglich as a member of the Council of Thirteen, as was promised to them from the Horned Rat himself, or at least that is what the rulers of Clan Pestilence were saying. Enraged at this transgression, the Council killed the emissaries and threw their rotting corpses in the outskirts of the Grand City to serve as an example to those that would try to defy their dominance. In retaliation, Klein Pestilence moved forward with their long-planned counterattack. With the use of biological warfare, the Klein devastated whole strongholds of Skaven, all around the Southlands. One major clan, Clan Merkit, still fought on against the invaders, but Clan Pestilence planned a faster solution and unleashed a foul cauldron filled with warp stone and putrescence upon the network of caverns within Mort Merkit's stronghold, killing the entire clan within a matter of hours. It was said that only Lord Merkit and his personal retinue of Honor Guard were the only survivors of this massacre. With the loss of Clan Merkit, the Council responded by amassing several armies of Clan Rats, supported by the warlock engineers of Clan Scryer and their push against Clan Pestilence. The response was late, however, for by the time the armies had engaged Clan Pestilence, the remaining Southland clans had changed their allegiance to the new growing power. With their armies bolstered by fresh recruits, Clan Pestilence had the sufficient numbers needed to engage the Under Empire head on. As the years passed, the war was escalating uncontrollably into a full-fledged Skaven civil war, with whole armies of their kind slaughtering each other for the cause of the ambitious few. The war grew so fierce that it also began to take its toll on the Under Empire, both financially, militarily, and politically. So unstable and incompetent were the Council at dispatching Clan Pestilence that several other Skaven clans revolted against their tyrannical reign, either joining Clan Pestilence's claws or made war for their own personal gains. This war would last centuries until the arrival of another clan would break the stalemate. But that is a story for another day. Needless to say, due to recent assassinations of high-ranking plague priests, lords, and generals associated with Clan Pestilence, Lord Nurglich made his way towards the capital city of Skavenblight. After surviving several assassination attempts on his way to the city, Nurglich abased himself before the Great Temple of the Horned Rat and unreservedly placed the resources of his clan at the disposal of the Council of Thirteen. However, many within the council wanted him dead for the devastating civil war that he had brought upon the Under Empire and called for his execution. Nurglist anticipated this, and to further his point, he revealed to the whole council a single small vial. With fanatical eyes, he told them that he was carrying a vial of Yellow Skull Fever, one of Clan Pestilence's most virulent diseases, and any further attempts on his life would leave him with no other choice but to release said contagion there and now, upon the very heart of Skavidum itself. Of course, the council, swallowing their pride, welcomed their long-lost brethren back with open arms. An arch-plague Lord Nurglich earned the right to a trial by combat against one of the Council of Thirteen. Though it was a near thing, the plague lord used a poisonous bite to defeat his opponent, Lord Vask, the most vulnerable member within the council chamber, in single combat. With that deed, Clan Pestilence cemented their place within the Under Empire. And that was the birth of Clan Pestilence and all the way up to pretty much current day Clan Pestilence, give or take a couple wars in there and an additional civil war. But a lot of that we will be covering in a, uh, in a later video. So as far as leadership goes, Lord Nurglich is still the reigning head of Clan Pestilence to this day. And no one quite knows how old or exactly how, other than the blessings of the Horned Rat, he has stayed alive for as long as he has? Now, from a theological point of view, the Plague Monks believe that the rest of their Skaven brothers have been misled by the Grey Seers. They feel that the average Rat Man has been blinded to what they profess to be the true face of the Horned Rat, namely, Pestilence itself. The clan's overriding goal is to bring the rest of the Under Empire into the fold, while avoiding declarations of heresy from the Grey Seers. Appeasing the Grey Seers for the time being is the only way to succeed. In time, once their victories have been secured and the rest of the Skaven clans have been won over, the Grey Seers too will follow their example or ultimately die. 
Like the Grey Seers, the Plague Monks, Priests, and Deacons of Clan Pestilence believe the time of the Great Ascendancy is fast approaching. Pestilence's peculiar twist on this mythology is that the Horned Rat will only allow such a victory if the majority of the Under Empire has converted to their form of worship. How else can one explain the failures wrought time and time again by the bumbling campaigns of the Lord of Decay? Despite their dim views on the majority of Skavendom, especially the Grey Seers, Clan Pestilence does serve the Lords of Decay by destroying their enemies with fresh brewed plagues, the likes of which the Old World has never seen. The Council is all too happy to accept Pestilence's aid in battle, as disease is a powerful weapon in anyone's arsenal. Not only are the Plague Lords capable of creating new ailments, they are also quite able to effortlessly cure a number of diseases. While the general consensus of Clan Pestilence members is that curing any sickness or disease is almost akin to blasphemy, so they know that now is not the best time to make such revelations know, known to the uh, their masters on the council, but the Lords of Decay can easily recognize the value of Pestilence's contribution to their war efforts, and they continue to enlist their aid in their campaigns. Now we will move on to the military, the um, army units and tactics of Clan Pestilence. So the plagues of Clan Pestilence kill insidiously, regardless of an enemy's arms or armor. They are quiet weapons that do not risk the lives of their near immune plague monks that spread them. The enemy even spreads the diseases for the Skaven and provides breeding grounds for the plagues in the form of the poor sanitation and hygiene in the majority of the old world cities. As an added bonus, diseases do not destroy structures, equipment, or other spoils of war. Once the plagues have been spread and allowed to do their work, the madness and resilience of the clan's plague monks make the fighting forces of pestilence powerful foes on any battlefield. Formations of frothing plague monks are led into battle by a line of censor bearers, Skaven chosen to wield sacred plague censors against their foes. The Pestilence believe that their enemies will either fall to the plague or will fall to despair when their kin succumb. Even if they survive the physical and mental anguish that plagues bring, they will be so weakened in body and spirit that they will easily fall before the verminous horde. One of Pestilence's methods of spreading diseases involves specially bred rats. These plague rats are infected with any one of a number of diseases and are then released into the sewers and alleyways of an old world city. Rats are a common sight in any city, and the plague rats of Clan Pestilence seem no different from alley rats to the casual observer. They creep on quiet feet into the homes and larders of the old world, leaving behind diseased droplings and half-eaten foodstuffs. Another tactic Pestilence uses to press spread disease involves the use of prisoners. These unfortunate wretches are infected with a plague that is slow to manifest. Once infected, the Skaven release them and when they make their way back to their people, they become the unwitting killers of thousands of their own kind. By the time these symptoms are evident, it is far too late. This was done to great effect in the Empire by use of the Black Plague, which crippled the Man-Things to such an extent that the Skaven actually revealed themselves and nearly took over most of the Empire and enslaved or ate the majority of its population. Of course, this didn't last long, but I will go into greater detail on this war in a future video sometime. I know this is a running theme so far in this video, but I promise I will deliver on all of these. And that brings us to our first unit in the Clan Pestilence roster. The Plague Monks of Clan Pestilence are masters of contagion and disease. At the lowest level, they are fervent and devoted worshippers of the Horned Rat, singing daily praises and liturgies to the Lords of Decay. Each is riddled with disease, covered with self-inflicted wounds and eruptions that ooze blood and pus. When unleashed against the enemies of the Skaven, Plague Monks are much more effective than one might expect. It is easy to discount their abilities given their sickness, yet it seems that they find solace in their constant pain. Mundane discomforts like severed limbs and open bellies cause them no more than the passing discomfort. Plague Monks form the bulk of Clan Pestilence troops. When plague monks gather, their squeaky chanting can be heard as they recite from the foul book of woe, endlessly repeating the liturgus infectus, or the rites of infection. If they are going to war, the plague monks march under one of their clan pestilence banners, often a half-rotted carcass hanging from a banner pole, bearing unimaginably twisted visions rendered in pigments distilled from blood and warp stone. 
As the foul brethren march forward towards an enemy battle line, their chanting picks up its pace and the plague monks seem to incite themselves into a terrible rage. In combat, plague monks hurl themselves into the fray with fanatical ferocity, eager to bring death and destruction to their foes. It is easy to discount their abilities, given their illness, yet it seems that they find solace in their constant pain. With bulging eyes and foaming mouths, the plague monks seem to possess an unnatural and unholy fervor. They relentlessly attack with filth-encrusted blades, iron-tipped staves, or even their needle-sharp teeth. A plague monk's exposure to pestilence has rendered its toughened, boar-ridden skin nearly immune to all forms of pain. The ability to shrug off crippling injury, the, the ability to shrug off crippling injury, combined with their near hysterical zealotism, means that the only reliable way of stopping a plague monk attack is to wholly dismember the disease-ridden skaven. Now, we will be receiving the Plague Monks in Total War as a poison-dealing mob of infantry with relatively high leadership, no armor, and, well, their leadership is high for escaping, I guess I should say. And they will be dual-wielding swords and, I guess, daggers, meaning they will put out a lot of damage, but will drop like flies to range fire, similar to the recent Berserkers we have seen in the Norskin roster. And now we move on to the Plague Sensor Bearers, which are the suicidal fanatics of Clan Pestilence, warriors chosen from amongst the ranks of the Plague Monks for their unquestioning devotion to their faith and cause. To be chosen for such a duty is a grand honor, and one that is never refused, even though it will lead to the monks' own demise. To die in the service of the Horned Rat, swinging a smoldering plague censer with righteous seal is compensation enough for these maddened cultists. Unlike in other clans, where ferocious politics and killing earn special attention of any sort, Amongst the Plague Monks, it is considered dedication, and those with the greatest dedication are allowed the privilege to wield Plague Sensors. A Plague Sensor is a hollow spiked ball attached to a length of chain. In an unholy ritual, a Plague Priest would read aloud disturbing and disease-ridden passages from the Book of Woe, while a shard of warpstone is ceremoniously placed inside the cruelly spiked globe. Afterwards, a ladle's worth of vile contagion is added, poured over the warpstone itself. Hellish runes begin to burn as the concoction begins to bubble into a boil, releasing large fumes. Contact with the haze of noxious fumes emitted from a gently swaying sensor will cause flesh to erupt in sores and fluid-filled blisters. Exposure to these fumes can also cause horrific damage to any who breathes it, which fills the lungs with virulent fluids that cause the victim to die of suffocation. Extremely few creatures devoid of common sense can be anywhere near such a weapon, let alone wield it in battle. As such, the image of Censor Bearer rhythmically swinging their plague-filled weapon at the forefront of the oncoming Skaven Horde is the stuff of nightmares. A Plague Chanter, the unholy acolyte of a Plague Priest, is usually the one who zealously leads the Censor Bearer into the fray. When the enemy nears, the foaming and fanatical sense of bearer would increase the arc of their swings, leaving contrails and encircling rings as they dash towards their foe. Recklessly and fully deranged, the sense of bearers often fall victim to their own weapon, inhaling a lung full of pollution or even impelling themselves into the arms of the enemy before they and those around them would die an agonizing death. Now we are getting the plague sense of bearers in Total War Warhammer, but they have been rather cryptic as to if they are their own individual units or more than likely what I believe is that they will be a bound ability similar to the night goblin fanatics the sensor bearer is said to be an armor piercing unit and will give a morale debuff to whomever is in melee combat with it and now we move on to the artillery of clan pestilence with the plague claw catapult which is a foul contraption that hurls contagions and diseases of all kinds to the ranks of the enemy of Clan Pestilence. Since the rise to power, Clan Pestilence has been hard at work creating new strains of diseases. The bubbling vats filled with carcasses and warp stone are forever brewing vile concoctions. While failing to create the ultimate contagion to rid the world of all the surface dwellers, the Plague Monks have discovered their pestilence byproducts make worthy weapons on their own. The unbalanced blend of poisons, chanted magics, and disease-soaked corpses makes a liquid that can kill on contact. Over the centuries, many have suffered the wrath of the foul creations of clan pestilence. Rival clans have been destroyed outright as befilth wastewater has been pumped into to flood their enemy caves and warrens. It was in the Southlands that crude torsion devices first began hurling loathsome substances onto the foe during battle. 
The Plague Monks learn to deliver their pestilent payloads via a catapult, the erupting splatter of deadly contents slaying the targets in a toxic storm. Those splashed by the semi-congealed liquid find their skin simultaneously sloughing off in ruin and elsewhere erupting in glistening sores. Armor offers no protection against such loathsome weaponry. Now, after the reconciliation following the Second Civil War, Clan Pestilence received technical help from the warlock engineers of Clan Scryer. Soon the crude war engines built by the Plague Monks were replaced with what we are now known as the Plague Claw Catapult. These loathsome war machines are great wheeled scaffold towers bearing adorned with pennants and runes, mounting torsion powered arms. Pushed into position by ragged clan pestilent acolytes, the claw-like arm of a plague claw catapult is winched back and unleashed to lob hideous death, a putrid mixture of disease, soaked corpses, semi-congealed poisons, and even traces of warpstone. The toxic semi-liquid leaves a glowing streak across the sky as it arcs earthwards. We are getting the plague claw catapult in Total War, and I'm very excited about it. It acts as a decent damage dealer, um, lobbing artillery, you know, over the heads of your own troops, with a little buff in that it will inflict poison and also do a rather considerable amount of morale damage on enemy units. And speaking of morale damage, the Plague Furnace is a disease-ridden altar dedicated to the Horned Rat and an unholy pulpit for a Plague Priest to preach the words of their faith. These mighty war machines are covered in runes and foul sigils dedicated to the vile Skaven deity. It is the noisome shrine of clan pestilence and ruination and corruption that travels in its wake. The plague furnace is pushed into battle by a congregation of chanting plague monks. The creaking of its iron shod wheels audible above the drone of the devotion of maledictions. The decaying chassis of the plague furnace is riddled with woodworm, but it is the vast and ornate swinging brazier that commands attention. A glowing hot sensor of wrecking ball proportions swings back and forth, issuing overwhelming heat and a recoiling cloud that even simple beasts instinct instinctively recognize as poisonous and unnatural. The rhythmic swinging of the infernal furnace produces an ominous sound as the pendulous sensor drags through the air, leaving a trail of deadly fumes and lethal contagions. It stings the eyes and assails the senses to gaze at the shimmering heat of the swaying globe. As the greenish vapors drift over the plague monks, it wets their tattered robes. Their befouled fog begins to take to make the pox-ridden brethren twitch, their eyes bulging out in an unholy fervor for battle and bloodletting. As the plague furnace is brought against the enemy, the plague monks strain more fervishly at the ropes, increasing the momentum of the blazing orb. At the frothing brotherhood crash the plague furnace into the enemy battle line. The rusty chains holding the great warpstone and incinerator are let slip, so the vast sensor plummets into the middle of the enemy unit. The unholy payload continues to spew the deadly green-tinged warpstone fumes while it is hoisted back into place. Now we are in fact getting the plague claw, or the plague furnace, excuse me, in Total War Warhammer, but it, it will not be its own unit. It is a possible mount for your plague priest, and I would assume that it would have a minimum of a combat aura debuff for your enemies, and I would think it would also give a decent buff for your plague monks. Now, I do not know this for sure, but it, lore-wise, it should also have a damaging aura around it, as the, kind of like the plague sensor bearers, it would not only demoralize your enemy, but also almost act like a um, mortis engine pulling down health from uh, enemy units. And as you can see, it is very... It's almost like the um, Clan Pestilence version of the Screaming Bell. It's their version of uh, the Screaming Bell. And that's it for the units of Clan Pestilence. And now we move on to their hero. The Plague Priest of Clan Pestilence occupies the highest and most senior position within the clan, just below the Plague Lords and themselves. These Lords of Pestilence guide their foul brothers in the eternal pursuit to create the greatest and most horrific, virulent diseases known to all Skavendom and use it to weaken the surface world for their final apocalyptic invasion. It is the Plague Priest who stroked the righteous fury of the younger Plague Monks, teaching them litanies of hate and breeding intolerance for all customs outside their own. Loyal and fanatical, these Ratmen are singularly devoted to their holy cause. Within the workings of Clan Pestilence, each member does not seek individual wealth for themselves, but instead are utterly and insanely focused on their master's work. It is the diseased but devoted Plague Priest who enforce this harsh discipline. 
Under the guidance of the Plague Lords, the Plague Priests are responsible for leading daily rituals meant to record and monitor the newest strain of virulent diseases that are forced upon not just captive slaves, but even other Skaven and the monks themselves. Indeed, their own especially made diseases are not feared, but accepted as a blessing of these fanatics. To them, being a living and walking altar of contamination is the strident goal of every Plague Priest, who themselves lead by example. As such, each Plague Priest is given the duty of ensuring that the Cauldron of a Thousand Poxes, an ancient and evil artifact stolen from Nurgle himself, are never empty, but instead brim over with many new diseases ready to be unleashed upon the world. When the clan goes on a holy crusade, the Plague Priests are the ones who will the Plague Priests are the ones who lead their brethren to war, claiming to be given sorceress abilities by their malevolent god. The Plague Priests are able to unleash many spells of corruption and pestilence upon their enemy. Vomiting out geysers of black death or cursing the enemy from afar so that they may erupt with blistering boils. When the outcome of the battle has particular importance to their clan, a Plague Priest might even sanction the building of a Plague Furnace to accompany the Brotherhood on their divine mission to destroy all those who oppose them. The Plague Priest is the only hero from Clan Plestilence, and we are in fact getting them as a casting hero in Total War. They will be able to use spells from the lore of Plague, which we have not seen yet in game, and as I said previously, they can ride a Plague Furnace as their only mount. They will obviously do poison damage, and I would assume they are probably not that great in melee combat. As a little side note, the pages that the Plague Priests scrawl their diseases on are in fact made from skin. Skaven and many other races, in addition to the Cauldron of a Thousand Poxes, Clan Pestilence is also said to have stolen several books from many followers of Nurgle to add to their plague repertoire. Though Nurgle doesn't seem to really care, as in fact through what they believe as devotion to the Horned Racked, in fact, also makes Grandfather Nurgle stronger. This can be seen during the Black Plague that ravaged the Empire, as followers of Nurgle were found to be helping the Skaven smuggle infected refugees in the Middenheim in an effort to bring the city down from within. Now, I'm not saying that Clan Pestilence worships Nurgle outright, and in fact they wholeheartedly believe that everything they do is in honor of the Horned Rat, and are the most fanatical of all Skaven kind. And this has actually been a rather long video, but hopefully you learned something about Clan Pestilence. They may lack in diversity of units, but what they do bring to the table is vast numbers. Possibly the most out of all of the other great clans, I feel like they have the largest sheer bulk of an army, and they are very interesting plays and debilitating their foes as well, uh, as one of their other tactics. And that's going to be it for Clan Pestilence. If you are new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out, especially one of my size grow, and I appreciate all the support I've been getting to make these lore videos. I enjoy the making them, and I'm happy to share them with all of you guys. I would like to say thank you to my subscribers for sticking with me, and more lore is definitely on the way, so don't tune out yet. <laughs> And I have been Jumbo Thick, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And to anyone still with me, have a good day. Hey,